G'day gardeners, welcome along to the vlog. It's the first week of September here on the east coast of Australia, which means spring is in the air. Today it's gonna to be 28 degrees Celsius, so for us we have a short spring and a long summer, as opposed to a lot of colder climates where they have a longer winter and a shorter summer. So temperatures are already getting up into the range where we can start growing some of those summer crops that you might struggle with to grow in England or other places in the Northern Hemisphere. So today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you for our garden, give you a tour, show you what we're growing, and uh, talk about the plans of what we're going to be doing in the next few weeks and show you some of the seedlings we've got on. So without any further ado, let's go. Okay. So first of all, we're going to take you over to our garlic bed. And as you can see, I've got garlic growing on one side of this bed and I've got some onions growing on the other side. They're potato onions and the garlic is an Italian purple variety. Now the garlic is not growing too well at the moment um, and I think it's probably pretty obvious in the uh, footage you're looking at that you can see the garlic's really struggling this year. Not 100% sure why or what I've done wrong this year but it really is uh, struggling. It may be the soil, it uh, may just be the garlic bulbs I used or the, or the weather we've had. Not 100% sure, I've been keeping the water up to it. Uh, as well as the uh, fertilizer, liquid fertilizer. So, yeah, it's hard to tell because we've got the um, potato onions growing right next to it, which are doing really well. So, um, and they're getting ready now for me to start an experiment on them. And what I'm going to be doing is thinning them out in the hopes that I can get bigger individual bulbs. And I'm going to thin out some of the smaller um, shoots that you can see in there and use them as essentially as like spring onions or green onions in our kitchen and then hopefully that'll provide a little bit more room for the remaining bulbs in the ground just to grow a little bit bigger okay we've got some potatoes growing in these two pots um the heirloom variety and i can't actually remember which ones i planted in there so uh i'll have to find out when we harvest them we've got our dwarf lime tree we've got a kaffir lime we've got a bay leaf tree and we've got a few pots over there with some flower seeds growing in them. So we're growing some flowers in the pots this year. Just trying to attract the bees to the garden. In my bin I've got some peas growing. I, I grow peas in the bin every year. And uh, they're doing really well this, um, this year. I, I plant them in early winter. And overwinter them probably, I think it was the late June, early July. Actually it's probably about midwinter to be honest. Um, but they're doing really well. It's starting to flower now and produce small pods. Okay, in this bed, we've got another pot with some potatoes in it there. In this bed, we're growing leeks. There's some leeks here. We've got some golden pod peas over there, which aren't doing too well. And uh, I've never been able to grow them well. I don't know what it is about the golden pod peas, but they just don't do well. Okay, at the background there, you can see we've got some beetroot seedlings growing in clusters. And there's a little bit of sage in the, uh, in the back there. That sage has been there now for about eight months and growing nicely. There was parsley around it, but the parsley has been pulled now and composted because it was bolting to seed. But the sage is still there, doing very well. See, only probably the first sage I've ever been able to grow. We've tried growing in pots for years and never had any success. We put it in the garden and it grows. Uh, we've got some standard onions here. These are Australian brown onions. We're growing these in clusters as well, which is... Um, for onions, for, for uh, bulbing onions, like your typical um, kitchen onions, like your big browns and your, and your reds and your whites, um, I pretty much read that you, you, know, you want to have at least one plant. You don't want to be growing clusters if you want larger bulbs or larger onions. Um, but we actually prefer the smaller onions. We prefer them smaller, so we've been growing them in clusters uh, and hopefully not so we don't get too big an onion. I mean, we do use onion in the kitchen. We use a lot of it. Obviously, we're growing onions everywhere. But um, on a per meal basis, we don't use a lot. So we'll see how that experiment goes. Okay, over here, over here we've planted uh, some cabbages today. And in the background there you see we've got lettuce. And we've got some peas growing up, um, that wire mesh there. That's all the same variety, so green, I think they're green feast, I'm pretty sure they are. The ones in the pot and the ones on that wire mesh okay let's go over here so first bed here we are growing lettuces and carrots 
doing very well. They're a, um, a semi-cos lettuce. I can't remember the name of them. And the carrots, I can't remember the name of that either. But they're both doing very well. Um, they've been thinned out uh, a week ago. And I've actually experimented. These two lines of carrots here, I've got one that I thinned more than the other. So it's just an experiment to see how the carrots grow very thin versus not as thin. So obviously I'm expecting thinner carrots, the ones that aren't thinned as heavily, and the ones that are thinned more heavily, I'm expecting bigger carrots. So uh, we've got a, a volunteer lettuce there. We didn't sow that, this just popped up. Uh, we've got some, that's an Asian cabbage, Wombok. Um, some more regular cabbages, they're, they're dwarf cabbages. And over here you can see there's another row of lettuces there. Now that row of lettuces, came from this bed here so essentially I've thinned out this bed and the ones that I thinned out I put over in this bed here and replanted them and they all survived well and they're all growing very well so interesting variety of this lettuce so I, I was able easily able to um, to lift them out as I was thinning them and plant them in various spots around our garden which I have now going up past the olive tree in the pot at the back of this bed here we've got sunflowers growing this year we had sunflowers growing here last year but we planted them much later and all these seedlings here are, are, have been grown from the seed from those sunflowers from last year and we had 99 percent germination on those seeds so excellent seeds and um, we should have some good sunflowers come october and at the back there along the fence you can see we've actually got two fig trees we've we've had those in pots for years and we've now planted them in the ground at the fence there and we're going to espalier them along the fence. Uh, I've just got to buy the materials to uh, attach the wires and we're basically going to grow it on the wires um, horizontally. Okay, we'll have a quick look inside the greenhouse. Oh, there's the compost heap. The compost is doing well, that's our compost from last year. Oops, dropped that in there before, I'll take that out. So that's last year's compost. Um, that's broken down really well. So that's all the grass clippings and all the green matter from our kitchen and cardboard pizza boxes, all my brewing waste from my home brew, all the grain, spent grains and hops, everything goes in there, except for meat. That's our current pile, which is doing quite well. Uh, it's we practice a no fuss compost. We don't we don't get um, too uh, crazy about it. We don't try and save things and layer it and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I do try to layer it. But we compost as we go, and we're not too worried about um, how that generally works. It doesn't get as hot as a, as a compost heap would if it was bigger or if you did it probably better. But at the end of the day, we still get some beautiful compost, so works for us. Okay, check out the mini greenhouse. Okay. Now mini greenhouse, we've got some seedlings here. This is my, these are my daughter's seedlings. She's growing them for school. Uh, they normally have a kitchen garden at school that they visit once a week with the kids. Because she hasn't been at school because of lockdown, we've been doing this at home with her. So, she's her seedlings on the front. And at the back, these are capsicums that are coming up now. Over here, I sowed uh, cucumber seeds from our um, the variety we used last year for pickling. Uh, unfortunately, though, of the dozens of seeds I've put in so far, I've only got two seedlings. So, obviously, there's an issue with the fruit that I picked. I may have picked it too soon so the viability was no good or I may have uh, just not treated it properly after I picked it to get viable seed, not sure. So over this side we've got some, these are blackberries. These are the supposed non-invasive blackberry. Um, but these canes, if they drop back in the ground, will root. So it can spread quite easily, but these are canes that I've pulled out of the ground that had roots on them and we're just growing them up in pots. This little guy here is a hop plant. If you have a closer look there, that's a hop plant, and I'm growing that for my beer. That's a variety called Pride of Ringwood. It's an Australian cultivar. And at the moment we've got some tomatoes in this one. These are the San Marzano tomatoes. We've got some dill. Uh, a couple of spring onions left that need to go on the ground. And these are our, uh, these are my tigrellas. The rest of these had, um, uh, capsica, uh, sorry, uh, beetroots, but they've all been planted. And this one here is Thai basil. I've only got two of those so far. 
but I had some issues with the soil. Okay. Last but not least, I'll take you guys up the back and just show you the other hot plants I've been planting. This pot here has, I was only, I only put the rhizome in this pot uh, three days ago, but I'm growing a variety in here called Columbus, and these hops will grow up because hop vines are uh, quite vigorous and they grow to six to eight meters. So I'm gonna grow it up and around the top of our trampoline. And I've got another one I've got to plant today, another rhizome, and that pot's essentially gonna sit right about there. And the soil here, soil here, sorry, at the front of this bed, uh, that's going to be my pumpkin patch. So I treated that the other day with cow manure and some fertilizer and uh, turned the soil just to loosen it up and get it ready. And in one to two weeks, I'm going to start sowing uh, our summer pumpkins. And this year we're growing the ironbark ones, so we'll see how they go. Um, oh, sorry, wait a minute, there's one more bed we need to look at. If I cross over the lawn, We've got a flower bed over here, flower and herbs. So we've got some mint, uh, marjoram. Over here we've got our basil and oregano. Some lettuce growing there. A couple of small lettuces down there. And sunflowers. And these are all flower seeds. So we're growing those just to attract the bees. And that is some comfrey, which keeps coming up. Even though I pulled it out, comfrey is uh, don't plant it in your garden if you don't. Uh, if you want to get rid of it again, it's really hard to get rid of. But yeah, that's where we're up to. That's our vlog for today. I'll finish with the grapevine. Grapevine's doing well. Got some buds coming up. And that's our grape trellis. So we'll grow our grapes along the side of the house there. So that's our uh, garden at the moment. This is the first week of September in uh, 2021. It's pretty warm today. It's already about 26 out here now. Um, so essentially our, uh, our summer is almost here. Next week we're looking at colder temperatures down back below 20. But uh, this week and up to the weekend, mid to high 20s. So really warm, but that's typical for our climate. Um, and where I live, west of Sydney, we have a much different climate today than they do on the coast in the city itself so we're much hotter much drier uh, but we still have a low frost risk out here even though some of the western suburbs have um, very high frost risk in winter we actually have very low frost risk here we only had a couple of mild frost this year so that's what we're doing this uh this week thanks for joining the vlog join me again next week and i'll show you the progress and we'll see how things are going cheers